Hi, my name is Steve James. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 343. And today, I'm going to get into our new body. I'm going to look at some scriptures that will give us some clues and hints about what our new body will look like. It's not everything that our body will be like. That will come when Jesus Christ returns. But we'll learn a little bit about it this morning, okay? I'm going to start in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is the first scripture that we probably read and understood about Jesus Christ returning for us. It says in verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep, the word in it shouldn't be in the text, by means of Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I love this thing. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. These words are a great comfort to one another as we speak them. We didn't learn a tremendous amount about what our new bodies will be like, but we do know that we're going to be with the Lord after that moment. Pretty cool, huh? Go to Romans chapter 8. We're going to start in verse 11. Now, this whole chapter of Romans is about our spirit. Spirit that we got, the new birth spirit, how it operates, how we're able to do things because of it. It's just a tremendous chapter to read about learning about our spirit. But I'm going to point out some things about our body here. And I'm going to start in verse 11. It says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your model bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. The spirit that dwells within us right now helps our model bodies, but it's also going to be part of our new body. The spirit that we receive is a token of what we're going to receive at the return. We get the spirit part right now, and we can start to operate it and utilize it in our lives. Go down to verse 14, and it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We're led by it. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage or servitude again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption or sonship, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Once we get that Holy Spirit, it's the spirit within us as we operate and manifest it. When we speak in tongues, it's like, hey, you know you're a son of God now because you can't speak in tongues without it. It's the proof. It's the witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs with Christ. And we know what that means, to be a joint heir. It means we share fully in 
What, Jesus Christ? Yes. Pretty wild, huh? If so be that we suffered with him, that we may be also glorified together. God looks at us just like Jesus Christ. Just with the token of the Holy Spirit, we're going to get something more that's going to be really neat. Go to verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. The image, the same image, it's talking about the body, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. That's talking about us. That's talking about what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And it's almost like a cheer in my mind. No one, no one, no <laughs> one. And l listen, let's say, oh, there's a bunch of people and things that are against us. It don't matter when God's yeah, for you. Yeah. He trumps them all. He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us everything? It says all things. This includes the new body. He's going to freely give us all things. We're discovering what about this new body, our new body. Go to 1 Corinthians 13. Romans, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13. We all know this is the love chapter, which is a, always a fun one to read. I'm going to start in verse 8, though. Charity never faileth. The love of God in our minds, in action, never faileth. Or another way, the love of God in the renewed mind, never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. In our lives, we just know in part, really. And we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. The perfect one that's coming is Jesus Christ. When he comes here, we won't need those things anymore. Verse 11 starts to tell us about why. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly. The things that we do know, it's like looking through a glass darkly. But then, face to face, when we see him face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. There's going to be a day when we're going to know everything we need to know. We're going to know. We're going to know just like Jesus Christ knows. And then verse 13 says, But now, or and now abideth faith or believing. And hope, the big hope is the hope of the return. We also have hope and good outcomes in different things that we're dealing with in life. And charity, the love of God and the renewed mind and manifestation, these three, but the greatest of the, these is charity. See, as we get into God's word, we learn a lot about believing. We learn about believing and how to operate believing, and that makes us winners in many situations. We learn about the hope, and with the hope, we're able to stand to the end. With the love of God, which is the greatest of these, we walk that way, with love towards one another. It's the greatest of these. It's pretty neat. 
So there's more available. This section of God's word has always been a comfort to me when I don't know something. You know what I mean? I don't know the full scope of what's going on. But I know in part, there is some of the word I believe. Believe in hope, charity. Those are good things to know. And other things in God's word. But there's going to be a time when things are going to be made available. So sometimes when you're helping people or working with people and they want to know an answer or something, we can simply say, I don't know. I don't understand everything, but we will someday. That's why I was going to sing that song further along. Further along, we'll know all about it. But in the meantime, we know what we know and believe, and we stand on that. Go to chapter, in 1 Corinthians, go to chapter 15, and we're going to read some of this. This whole chapter deals with change is going to happen. What's going to happen when Jesus Christ returns for us? But like I was saying, I'm just looking at the new body. So I'm going to start in verse 35. Thou fool. God's word uses this word fool a lot. But anyhow, thou fool. That which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And now it's going to use the analogy of seeds. Verse 37. That which thou sowest, thou sowest not the body that shall be. When you bury like a corn, it's not what's going to be. You know, you can take a potato and the eye of the potato. You can cut that and plant that. And you're going to get lots of potatoes. It's not the same thing. That's all it's really saying. But the bare grain, it may chance of wheat or some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it has pleased him, and to every seed his own body. God's going to give the body that he wants to give. And he does that with all the seeds, right? All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of beast, another of fishes, another of birds. So we can see that clearly that we all don't have the same flesh, right? Mm -hmm. They are also terrestrial so or so. heavenly bodies and uh, bodies terrestrial, earthy earthy bodies but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another two different glories there's a glory of the sun and there's a glory of the moon another glory of the stars and one star different from another star in glory so also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. We're going to be in corruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. There is a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Interesting term there, spiritual body. There's a natural body, and there's a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Quickening spirit. The first Adam was made body, soul, and spirit. The last Adam had a body and soul. And the spirit was given to him at the baptism that John gave him. How be it, that was not first, which was spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they that are of the earthly. And as is the heavenly, such they also that are of the heavenly. 
And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. The image, the looking like, talking about Jesus Christ. We're going to have a body that's fashioned much like his. Verse 50, this I say, brethren, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Remember that. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. And that's where we're going to leave it there. But I'll tell you, the rest of the chapter it shows you a mystery in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. But we're studying our new bodies. So let's go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. See, what love God has for us, that we're called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. The world, the people who have worldly thoughts, the philosophies of the earth, they don't know God. And they won't know us either. Verse 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. When Jesus Christ appears, we're going to be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We're going to see him as he is. Let's go to Luke. We're going to look at Luke and look at Jesus Christ in his new body and learn some things. Luke chapter 24, and we're going to start in verse 13. And this is a good verse, you know, the week before the Resurrection Sunday. But verse 13 says, And behold, two of them went that same day to the village called Emmaus, which from Jerusalem was about three score furlong. This is Resurrection Sunday. This is the day that the women went to the tomb and didn't see Jesus there. And then Peter and John went and looked in, and they're talking about it, and they don't understand everything that's going on yet. But they know that Jesus Christ is no longer there. And so these two that same day, are on their way to Emmaus. And in verse 14, it says, And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Jesus was able to disguise himself somehow. Verse 17 says, And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another? And as you walk and you are sad, Jesus Christ spoke. They didn't recognize his voice. If you see movies, you know, and other stuff, people disguise themselves in different ways but they can't disguise their voice. People usually know who they are. His voice was even disguised. Verse 8, And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and has not known the things which have come to pass there these days? And he answered unto them, What things? What a question, huh? And <laughs> And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deeds and word, before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, Today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, 
they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken? Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. He was, well, I got to get going. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening. And the day is far spent, and he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at me with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Wow. I re read this because we're going to have a body much like this. I don't know what we're going to do with it, but it's interesting. Verse 32, And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? What really opens and blesses people is the scriptures, the word of God. They didn't know it was Jesus when he did it, but they did know their hearts were open. It says burn, burn mm -hmm. with fire to hear that word of God. And they rose up that same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together with them that were with him, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared unto Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Jesus somehow got into the midst of them, just was there. We're going to have a body much like that. Pretty exciting. But they were terrified and affrighted, and suppose that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do your thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that is, is, is I myself handle and me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bone. I find this very interesting because you usually we would say flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't say that. He said flesh and bone. And he said, look, see my friends, three days later, a natural man looking at his hands three days later, what do you think you'd see? Big wound, blood, trying to get out. Maybe you could bandage it. It would look a little different. But he had a new body. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. But, and he took it, and he did eat before them. So he could still eat. We're learning a little bit about what our new body might look like. Go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 20. And we're going to start in verse 19. Then the same day, and this is the resurrection day. This is the day that they went to the tombs, the women, and stopped the road to Emmaus the same day. It's actually going to be the same event when the Jesus was back in that room after the men from Emmaus got back. Because it says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, 
where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Can you imagine what it would look like in three days when you someone speared you into the side? They'd probably have to have a bandage, the, the natural body, right? Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. He's starting to teach them about their calling and what they're to do. And when he had said this, he breathed in. He breathed in and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. He was teaching them how to get born again. He was teaching them how to receive that spirit and what some of what they're going to be able to do with that Holy Spirit. Verse 23 says, And whosoever sin you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. They're, he's letting them know what they can do as they're teaching people. He can teach people that their sins are forgiven and how to get their sins forgiven and they can be forgiven. If they refuse to believe the word, he can say, well, your sins are just going to hang in with you, buddy. Something, right? And they will retain. Verse 24 says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with him when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hand the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of, his, of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them, then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hand, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believe him. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus answered and said unto Thomas, Because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. That's talking in part to us. We haven't seen the prince. We haven't seen the side, but we believe. Someone spoke the word and believed, and we believe. Pretty wonderful. Go to chapter 21. In verse 1, it says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. And I'm going to go pick it up in verse 4. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? And they answered him, Nope. And he said unto them, Cast your net, singular, on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it, it for the multitudes of fishes. Therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved, said unto Peter, It's the Lord. Now, when Peter, Simon Peter, heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisherman's coat unto him, for he was naked. That just means he had partially. And did cast himself into the sea. And the, the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net, with fishes. As soon as they were come to land, they saw the fire of coals there, fish uh, laid thereon and bread. And Jesus said unto them, 
bring the fish which ye have now caught. And Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him who thou art, knowing it was the Lord, knowing it was him. And Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise. There is a lot that we know in these records. In the earthly body, life is in the blood. Whenever you go see a doctor, you know what they do? Take your blood. They take your blood. <laughs> and they study it, and they try to figure out what's, what's right with you. Things like that. Uh -huh. But with this new body, there doesn't appear to be any blood. It wasn't mentioned. And it said flesh and bone, not flesh and blood. And he was able to have him see his prints and touch him. I had an operation about uh, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. They they cut in my arm a little, little scar. And they went and they fixed my nerve to my hand. I still got a mark there. You could still see. Uh, this thing can bleed pretty easily. It doesn't because I don't let it. But <laughs> I want it to heal. But it, you wouldn't want someone touching it three days later. No. Matter of fact, no one did. It was all wrapped and stuff. So. I have that as a thing, and I'm thinking the new body is going to be a, a spiritual body. That's what it said in Romans, a spiritual body, incorruptible, going to be neat. So that's all I know about it, and, uh, and that blesses me to think about that. I can't wait for the new body, because this one here gets, aches a little bit. Not every day, but enough. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.